In Unify Network Controller, it's very easy to set up port forwarding. This video is not about how to do port forwarding in Unify Gateway. Instead, it's about how port forwarding works together with firewall rules in Unify Gateways. So let me quickly set up a port forwarding first. As shown in the diagram, I run this gateway in my lab environment. So the one part gets a private IP address, but it doesn't matter. It works the same way when it's a public IP address. I have this one address, which is .2.138. And internally in my LAN, I run a testing server. It provides HTTP service. What I want to achieve is from internet, I visit this one part IP address with part 8888 internally, it should be automatically forwarded to the internal web server so that I can access the LAN web server from internet. Let's see how we can do that in Unify Gateway. In right side Unify Network Controller, I have a VLAN, which is VLAN 30. And in the security settings for firewall, I already enabled the zone-based firewall. As shown in the zone setting, I assigned the VLAN 30 to DMZ. From the, from the lower side terminal, from the DMZ server, let me make sure the web server is up and running. So I simply use wget to visit this local web service. It's not HTTPS, it's just regular port 80 web server. Okay, it's working right. The home page was downloaded. So that means locally from DMZ, I am able to visit the web server. But if I try to visit this URL as shown in the diagram using part 8888, of course it won't work, right? Let me run it anyway. Yeah, it's just hanging there because we don't have the port forwarding setup yet, right? Before we change anything about port forwarding, let's see what's the current firewall setting. If we go to the zone-based firewall matrix, because we are talking about to access the internal server from internet, right? So the source is external. First check from external to gateway. So you can see for all the existing default firewall policies, it does not allow anyone to access the internal server as what we want to achieve. For this one, the default firewall already prevented. Then let's see from external to DMZ, it only allow return traffic. It doesn't allow from external to initiate a web access. No, it's not allowed. Okay, current situation is the firewall rules don't allow such web access from external. Then let me start creating a port forwarding. In Unify Network Controller, I go to routing and their port forwarding. I create one, give it a name for web interface. Currently, I only have the primary one part active. It has this IP address. And then for one part, as shown in the diagram, I want to use 8888 to visit it from outside. Then from, I don't care what's the from IP address. For forward IP address, that's crucial. It should be my DMZ's local server's IP address. So it's the IP address of my VLAN 30 web server. Then about forward part, because it's plain HTTP, so part 80. For protocol, I'm good at entry. That's it, done. That's how easy it is to set up a port forwarding in Unified Gateway. Then we can validate whether it's working or not. From the lower right terminal, let me run the exact same command again. See, it works, which means everything's working already. But let's see how it works. Especially we are talking about DMZ, as we already saw by default, external cannot access DMZ. But why now the port forwarding is working, right? Let's go back to the zone-based firewall matrix from external to DMZ. Let's see what happened. So if I click on this cell, you can see it has a new policy added automatically by the system. And the name is exactly the same as 
how we named our part forwarding rule. So that means this policy is related to our part forwarding. It allow external to access DMZ to access this particular web server part number is 80 this is the protocol so the exact same thing as we said in the part forwarding because of this firewall rule in the external we are able to access the DMZ web server now but hold on a second why we are even checking about this particular cell from external to DMZ shouldn't we check the from external to gateway if you go to the diagram, you can see from internet, from external, how we access the internal server. We use this particular URL, right? This request will hit the gateway, not the internal server, which means from firewall perspective, we should maintain the firewall policy in this cell from external to gateway. That makes sense, right? But if we go to this cell, see nothing's changed the exact same policies as what we checked before we created the port forwarding right so then what happened what's going on why the firewall policy appears in seemingly wrong cell and interestingly the end result is correct in fact this is the trigger for me to make this video as i explained in my previous video about unify firewall and ip tables unifies old and the new firewalls they are both implemented using the backend Linux IP tables, more specifically filter table. In IP tables filter, it doesn't care about the business logics for your VLANs. For example, DMZ, guest, LAN, these terms don't mean anything to IP tables. IP tables filter only care about where your packet is from and what's the destination. If a given network packet the ultimate destination is the gateway itself. The logic will be executed in the input chain. If the packet is generated by the gateway itself, logic will be executed in output chain. And if the packet is simply being routed by the gateway, which means neither the source or destination is the gateway itself, the logic will be executed in the forward chain. Unify gateway will generate the internal IP table logics based on what you said in the graphical user interface. For our particular port forwarding scenario, when you visit the service, you type in the gateway's IP address, right? So it seems the input chain should be used, right? But based on what we observe from the zone-based firewall, the matrix, it seems the system put the logic, the rules inside forward chain. Is that really the case? Let's go to the backend to check the IP tables. SSH into UDM Pro. Let me run this command. I'm going to show you the filter table, show the verbose information with line number. These two rules are about our firewall policy for the port forwarding we set up. See which chain it is in? One DMZ chain. That makes sense. That's the exact cell we see from the zone-based firewall matrix. Then let's see which chain calls this one DMZ chain. It's called by the one in chain. Then let's continue to see which chain called this one in. Okay, it's called by this forward in. The name already implies it's in the forward block. But let's continue till we find the root. Okay, it's from forward user hook. Then from forward jump. So finally, we reach the root. So it is in the forward block. What we observe from the matrix is correct. So the firewall policy is implemented in the forward block, right? But as I already mentioned, it seems it doesn't make sense. The reason is we are connecting to the gateway. Why the policy is in the forward chain instead of input chain, right? Just to exclude the possibility that this kind of strange situation is caused by some buggy implementation in the new zone-based firewall. So let's do the same setting in another gateway. 
which doesn't support the zone-based firewall yet. Let's see in the old firewall settings whether we still have this weird situation. On the screen, I show you the UXG Pro's Unified Network Controller. And the routing, I already set up a example port forwarding. It works in the same way as what we just set up in the UDM Pro. Then in security, you can see from the user interface, it's still the old way to set up firewall, right? And then you can see our port forwarding related firewall rule is generated within Internet In. If you are still confused what's internet in, we can look into the backend to see where is the IP table filter rule is put in which chain, right? So then in the lower part screen, let me quickly SSH into UXG Pro. In the same way, I'm showing the IP table filter. Let me find where is the firewall rule related to port forwarding. Yeah, it's here. It's under one in chain and the one in chain is called by forward in user forward in user is called by forward user hook and the forward user hook is called by forward jump forward jump is called by forward so we have the exact same situation even in the old firewall the rule is also put in the forward block which means this has been working this way. It's not related to the zone-based firewall at all, right? So then we can confidently go back to our UDM Pro. Let's continue use the zone-based firewall to understand what really happened. In the lower part SSH session, let me run IP tables command again. But this time, instead of showing the filter table, which is for firewall, I want to show you the net table. It's for net rules, which are maintained in a separate table, which is called NAT. Let me run it. This chain, it has two rules. Both are DNet. It's a type of net. One is for TCP, the other one for UDP. And what they do, they match whether the destination IPv4 IP address is part of this IP set. And if the destination port number is 8888, if so, it will translate the destination IP address to this one with this port number. Does this look familiar? Yes, it's exactly like what we specified in our port forwarding rule. In fact, port forwarding is just implemented using NAT, more specifically DNAT. Okay, go back to the DNAT rule. Remember, we have this IP set, right? You can already guess what's in the IP set. It's simply the primary one's IP address, right? But let's confirm it anyway. Let me run IP set command. I want to see what's inside this set. It's defined using two subset and apparently the first one is for IPv4. So let me run the IP set command again against this subset. Now it's crystal clear, right? So it simply says as long as your destination IP address is the primary one's IP address, that DNet rule will apply. So now let's go back to the IP tables for net. Let's see which chain called this particular pre-routing user hook chain. It's called in this pre-routing jump chain. And then pre-routing jump chain is called by pre-routing. This is the main block for net IP table rules. So now it's clear as shown in the diagram we already found for the firewall policy. In fact, it's implemented in the IP tables filter forward chain. But for this port forwarding rule, which is a DNet rule, it's configured in the IP tables net table and in the pre-routing chain. So after we know the two main chain block names, it will help us to understand what happened from the sequence perspective. I draw this extremely simplified flowchart just to help you understand in the complete life cycle of a packet within the IP tables. If there's an incoming packet, it will first go through the pre-routing chain for net. Then it will go through a series of steps. In the middle, there's a IP tables filter forward chain where the firewall rule will be executed. So as you can see, the DNet rule execute before the firewall rule. That's super important as the key point to explain why our firewall rule appears in this particular cell. 
from external to DMZ instead of in this cell, which is from external to gateway. Because in our DNet rule, it will translate the destination IP address to the local DMZ server's IP address, which means when the flow is at this step, the destination is not gateway anymore, right? So that's why this particular cell will be effective. The port forwarding firewall rule is in this cell instead of this cell because of the DNet rule, because of the port forwarding. The port forwarding is implemented using DNet. For more general discussion regarding DNet and the port forwarding, I will leave the link to my previous video just for your reference. Okay, I hope it's clear. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.